Hey, good morning, Mount Olive. We hope that you're having a great day. We hope that you are having a blessed Monday so far. We are so excited here at Mount Olive because today, this week, is our Vacation Bible School where we are learning about how to shine Jesus' light. So it's all hands on deck. Our volunteers are rocking and rolling. Kids are coming into church right now. So we're super excited for a week of VBS, and we're really excited to continue to be in this devotion with you, to continue to to walk through the greatest sermon ever preached, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. So hope that you're all having a great day so far. Hope that you're having a good Monday. Hope uh, that you are being blessed by God wherever you are in your season of life. And if you are feel like you're not, we pray God's word has a message for you today, and it were, it's words of comfort, hope, peace, and strength. So we're super excited to be with you this day. We are going to be in Matthew chapter 5 today. So if you have a Bible, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 5 if you brought one. So the text that we're going over today is over stuff that maybe you have experience with or you know somebody who does have experience with. Uh, This is Jesus teaching about uh, divorce and he's going to be teaching about vows. So we're going to take a look in this word and see what he has to say, maybe see what the world has to say about it or what maybe culture says about it. But let's take a look at what Jesus says about marriage, what he says about divorce, and ultimately what he says about vows and how we are to live in our lives for those of us who are married, how we are to live live and lead in our marriages. So we are going to be in Matthew chapter 5. And we're just going to go ahead and start at verse 31. So here we go. Jesus teaches about divorce. You might see that little heading pop up above this uh, section of text. So let's jump right in. Verse 31. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Sounds pretty harsh. And when we take a look at this text, especially through our lens today, thousands of years later, it sounds like there's a lot of absolutes that Jesus is saying here. Now, obviously, there are grounds that are permissible for divorce, and not everybody <clears throat> not everybody enters into a marriage for the right reasons, but if you have been rocked by divorce, or maybe your family has been rocked by divorce, this is not Jesus condemning you, okay? This is not Jesus condemning you or that husband and wife or that family in any way, shape, or form. What Jesus is getting at here is that he wants people who enter that gift of marriage to take it seriously. So when he says uh, right here about this certificate, Jesus knows, just as you and I know, or maybe somebody in your family or friend group knows, divorce is a, it's a life breaker. It's a consequence of living in a fallen, broken world that, you know, marriages are made up of imperfect people. Sometimes things happen and sometimes divorce for the betterment of the husband and the wife for health, for safety, for you name it. Sometimes divorce is truly what's best. And so Jesus does not look at if you've been affected by it or you've gone through it. He does not look at you in hardship or judgment or pointing fingers at you. Jesus gives you his love, his grace, and his mercy and his comfort every single day. But what Jesus is getting at here is he says that if you are if you want to go through a divorce just for the sake of going through a divorce... Maybe you feel like you're falling out of love or you feel like, yeah, this I just don't really want to do this anymore. Jesus is condemning that where obviously in life, as much as it, as much as it is possible, if our marriages are on the rocks or they're hurting or they're struggling, obviously we want to take steps to fight for our marriages, to fight for the gift of marriage. And that can be you know, going through going through marriage therapy. That can be going through individual counseling or individual mentorship. And if hurt or adultery in any way, shape, or form has been committed, Jesus is not saying that this is an absolute out. So if one spouse is unfaithful to the other, okay, you have grounds to 
just cut it off right then and there. As much as it is possible, we would say, and Jesus would say, you know, fight for it, work on forgiveness, work on reconciliation, work on the healing. But unfortunately, sometimes that doesn't always happen. That doesn't always happen, especially if something significant happens in a marriage. And so Jesus would say, you know, if you've gone through that, or if you know somebody who has, that one, they're still loved, they're still bought and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Two, we should fight for our marriages day in and day out, regardless of wherever your marriage is at. And so that's what Jesus would have to say about divorce and adultery and marriage is that it's not something that we should take lightly. We should invest in that seriously. And if we know couples or maybe marriages who are on the rocks, that's where we as Christians have an incredible opportunity to rally around, to support, encourage, and help the couple fight for their marriage support them, point them to Jesus, do anything possible so that reconciliation can be made. But unfortunately, sometimes in this world, it's just not possible. But divorce is not the end of Jesus's love for you. So if you've gone through it, or you know somebody who has, or you've been affected by it, divorce does not negate the love that Jesus has for you, and it does not negate his saving work on the cross for you. And especially if you maybe have been remarried or you know somebody who's gotten married after a divorce that's not to say that they've done anything wrong it's okay this marriage fell apart or the prior marriage fell apart and so we hope pray and invest in the second marriage or the blending families or whatever the dynamic looks like so jesus would say in this text and what he's going to say in the text about vows is that we should take marriage seriously we should fight for it. We invest in it. And when times are tough or marriages are hurting, it's our opportunity to rally around and fight for that marriage and fight for those people and that family as much as possible. And if it works out, praise God for his work and everything that happens. If not, then that's where we come together to nurture, comfort, and support as we walk together as his body of believers. So, Let's go ahead and take a look at the next section. So this again is kind of piggybacks off of divorce and marriage. This is Jesus teaching about vows and how we should take vows seriously. Verse 33. Again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows that you have made. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem. For it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. And all you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. What is Jesus getting at here? You know, uh, verse 37, some of your translations might have it say, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. And what Jesus teaches about vows here is we should take vows seriously. So we shouldn't enter into something or make a vow that we are not fully invested in or that we fully don't intend to keep. So you can kind of piggyback that with uh, marriage. You can piggyback that with really anything in life that you would make a serious vow to or a serious acclaim to. So when Jesus says, do not swear an oath at all, what he's saying, <clears throat> what he's saying here is, is if you're not going to be fully invested into it, don't say it. Let your yes be yes and say, if it is marriage, say like, yep, I'm going to fight for this. I'm going to be a godly spouse as best as I am, as best as I am able. I'm going to be a godly partner in life. I'm going to be a godly parent, whatever it looks like. Do your best and take your vows seriously. So that's what Jesus is getting at because he's seeing the work of the Pharisees. He's seeing the work and the hurt that's going on in God's people. And he's come to bring that message of comfort, that message of healing and restoration. And he's also right here saying like, hey, he's here to support us. He's here to love us. He's here to die for our sins and do the thing that we can never do for ourselves. And that's because his vow. That's because of how seriously Jesus takes his vow and his oath and his mission. He knows exactly what he's going to do. He knows that he's going to go to the cross and suffer for all humanity. He's going to pay the price of all our sins. And he takes that seriously. And as followers of Jesus and as his disciples, we should take it seriously as well. We should let our yes be yes. 
and let our no be no. Because if we don't, one, that's a bad witness. <laughs> that's a really bad witness if Christians say that we're going to do something knowing that we're not going to fully do it. Well, that might do a lot of kingdom breaking instead of kingdom building. But knowing that we're sinners, that we're never going to get everything 100% right 100% of the time, that's where grace comes in. That's where Jesus meets us where we're at and he gives us his love, his grace, and his mercies, which are new every single day. So from this text, basically what Jesus would have for you is let your yes be yes, let your no be no. Take anything in your life, any blessing that God has given you seriously. Let your vows and let your actions speak louder than your I do's or I don'ts or I wills or I won'ts. Let your actions back it up because that action, that work of the spirit in and through you will do more kingdom work than we could ever imagine possible. So church, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day. Uh, we're so thankful for all the, the kids and the volunteers who are making Vacation Bible School possible as we learn about shining your light and we learn about the light that Jesus came into this world to bring. Uh, Lord, we're so thankful uh, for your word today. Lord, we know that uh, your word is powerful and that our words matter. So Lord, we just pray that uh, our yes would be yes and our no would be no, and that any credit from our actions, from our words, or anything else in our lives that you've let us be a part of, that we would deflect that credit because we know it's not us. We know it's all about you. And Lord, we pray that you would just continue uh, to work in us, that you would continue to grow us and nurture us and give us the strength that can only be found in you. And in all that we say and do, that it would bring glory, honor, and praise to you. We pray all this in your most holy and powerful name. And all God's people said, amen. Church, awesome to be with you this morning. Awesome to be in this devotion with you. Hit the share button. We want to continue to reach out and engage other people with the life-saving, life-changing news of Jesus. We want to wish you a blessed Monday. Uh, definitely want to encourage and invite you to pray for all the kids coming to VBS this week, for the volunteers, for the church, that we would continue to shine Jesus' light and that message would transform lives and transform all these kids that are coming through our doors to learn about our great loving Jesus this week. So have a great rest of your Monday. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow and being in the word with you tomorrow. So y'all take care and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.